Welcome back everyone. This will be the 5 p.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Pacific update on Hurricane Hillary. If you can look here at the satellite image, we're going to start in with a zoomed in uh, a shot of the satellite image. You can really see a classic satellite signature of a powerful hurricane, now a category four hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. If we switch over to the forecast, where is Hillary going to go and how strong will it be? So let me orient you here. This is Mexico, right? So Southwestern United States and Southern California. Hillary right now is down here as a category four hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour, moving off at the northwest at 12 miles per hour. It's a little bit faster than it was earlier today, starting to pick up speed as it, it, it begins to make the northward turn towards the Baja Peninsula. So as it turns and moves more, more towards the north and north northwest, it's going to approach the western side of the Baja Peninsula, and that's why they are under a hurricane warning. This red area here is a hurricane warning for the western portion of the Baja Peninsula. The blue is a tropical storm warning. So you hear, even though you're outside of the cone, even though you're outside of the cone, look at the wind field. Look at the size of the wind field here in the orange area, and you can sort of extrapolate that wind field up and over the Baja Peninsula. You can see you're going to get impactful winds uh, starting tonight, later this evening, for the southern tip, and then moving up over the spine of the Baja Peninsula uh, tomorrow. But then for all of us uh, watching in, in Southern California, in the Southwest United States, what's going to happen as it moves up into Southern California? As it moves into Southern California, it's going to weaken substantially. So we do not anticipate a hurricane moving into the Southwest United States. What we expect is a tropical storm. So here, Sunday night into Monday, moving into Southern California is a tropical storm 50 mile per hour uh, wind speed, and that's why we now have a tropical storm watch. That's what the yellow area denotes here, a tropical storm watch. For a large portion of Southern, Southern California, we zoom in here a little bit so you can see where you're at, including Los Angeles, San Diego, and Palm Springs area. So if you're watching from this area, Tropical storm winds, especially at higher elevation, possible uh, Sunday night into Monday as Hillary moves inland. But the wind isn't the, the biggest part of the story. The biggest part of the story is going to be the extremely heavy rainfall that is going to come with this system. So this system is going to pull all that tropical moisture into Southern California and the southwest United States and in and around Las Vegas, Southern Nevada area. Look at these rainfall totals here. So anywhere in yellow, four to six inches, anywhere in orange, the potential for up to 10 inches of rain. Now, if you're, you're not used to this, this is, these are rainfall amounts that are not typical of this area. Not only that, it's gonna come down much faster than what this area is used to seeing. These tropical rains come down at a much higher rate and it introduces the potential for flash flooding. So this is the flood risk map, and if you've been following along here, it looks a little different. There's more red in here, and now there's purple in here. So purple is a high risk of flooding. So Palm Springs area, you're under a high risk of flooding. But now this red area denoting a moderate risk, extending from Los Angeles, San Diego, Las Vegas, it is now within the action range. So we're thinking now that this rainfall potential is highly likely, potentially catastrophic flooding. Let me say that again, potentially catastrophic flooding for these areas highlighted here. Um, we're in the action phase now. So you need to really start thinking about what you're going to do if you're in these highlighted areas. Um, specifically, late Sunday into Monday is not going to be a good time to be driving around. If you've got weekend plans, it's probably time to start altering those plans. If you're going to be outside, doing outside activities where you cannot receive emergency alerts, let's say you're outside of cell phone range, um, you're probably gonna to wanna to cancel those plans or ensure you've got some sort of backup communication system to make sure you're getting these emergency alerts. Make sure on your cell phone, you have it enabled to receive emergency flood alerts from the National Weather Service 
or emergency management officials within the area. And I can't stress enough, if you're in this area here, it is time to start taking action to, to mitigate your risk, protect your family, uh, protect your property. The potential for flash flood risk is really high in this case, potentially catastrophic flooding. So other actionable thing to take home, you need to be checking for updates at least two times a day, at least two times a day. You can do that via watching uh, local weather coverage, uh, watching your local National Weather Service, or tuning in with us at hurricanes.gov. I'll say that again, hurricanes.gov for the latest information. Uh, we will be back here tomorrow to give you more live updates, uh, but you can always get interim information off hurricanes.gov. So we'll see you back here tomorrow with more information.